Hello everybody and welcome to another Comedian's Interview for my blog, A Rich Comic Life. My blog describes my experiences of watching over 800 comedians over the last 46 years and counting. My wonderful guest today is the comedian, Mr. Julian Dean. Thank you. Yay! Hello, mate. Hello, mate. How you doing? I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Really good to see you. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Um, we're gonna we're gonna talk for about forty five minutes to an hour about your comedy career. Okay. And I'd like to start. We can wrap off... that in five if you like. <laughs> I'd, I'd I'd like to start off by asking you how did you become a comedian in the first place? Um. I did. Um, I actually did a comedy course in two thousand five, um, and yeah. But I, I mean, I, I wanted to be one way before that. I just didn't ever think I could get because I'm quite shy. I didn't think I could get up on stage. Right. Um, but then I, I got this job I really wanted, and I was there for a month. And I thought, so this is it. This job forever. <laughs> My Shawshank Redemption, and like, <laughs> and then I. I don't know, I kind of, I just Googled how to be a comedian and um, the course came up, I booked it and wow. started the next day. And wow. yeah, and um, just took it from there really. Did my first gig, at the end of the course you do a gig. And even at the beginning of the course, they said you do a gig at the end of the course. I was like, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna <laughs> learn and then not do that yet. But I did the gig like everyone does, and then my second gig was the following day, and I just took it from there, really. Which um, comedy course was it, please? It was the Amused Moose. All right, yeah, and 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 did you do well in it? Did you did you feel as though you could be a comedian as a result of doing it? I would have said as a result of doing the course. I think it the course brought kind of. 10 or 15 or however many people there were like like-minded people together right i see so that it was good in that sense and it, it forced you on stage so it was good in that sense yeah yeah i did a um writing course with amused moose for this blog they 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 invited me uh, for a day with them and uh, oh, cool. ev and uh, everybody else around me wanted to be a reviewer and they forgot uh, a reviewer a reviewer i know yeah and um everybody uh, 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 when they came to me um they um uh, they 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 forgot who i was and i said well i'm not a reviewer i'm not a diarist i'm not a reporter i'm not a critique i'm a i'm a member of the audience and and i'm there to enjoy myself and i'm there to promote all the comedians that actually go out and have a go at doing it and, yeah yeah uh, they, they 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 never bothered me again they led into the reviews but reviewers who wanted to be a reviewer but, but they so never what was their me mother, i mean what why did they want to be reviewers i don't i don't really know because um uh it well it was a it was a it was a half day writing course how to um presumably give them tips on 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 how to do this now and i and i and i picked up one or two things but um but uh, but of course the whole point about my blog is that it's very positive and and it's a big enthuse for all the comedians that do it so um, yeah 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 that's what i that that's what i learned from it so you go and do your um comedy course and um your first ever gig was the following day did you say um no the first gig i think it was a sixth week course so it was right. every saturday right so it was only six days really but it was every saturday in uh, the enterprise in chalk farm just near camden right um so on the yeah then you have a showcase um at the end of the six weeks there's a showcase for all of the acts do like i think it's five minutes even less maybe right. and um yeah and then we do it then but i was so nervous through the whole half of my set well i'd memorized it so well there was no way i wasn't gonna i was gonna forget any words i drilled it yeah. all the time and um i got up on stage but my eyes just closed for the first half of my set oh mate 
I was so nervous, but wow. I didn't even know until I got off. Someone mentioned it, but yeah. So that was the first gig, and the second gig was a uh, outside the box in Kingston. Math Brown's. Oh, I know it well. Lovely, lovely yeah. gig. That was the first night of that gig. Wow. And I opened that, and um, yeah. So and then just went so, from there. So that would be two thousand and five, something like that. Yeah, December two thousand five. Right. So. Um, <laughs> To get your apprenticeship into comedy, did you um, did you do like five minute gigs in pubs with friends along for the ride, or is that is that how you gained the experience of doing it? Well, I got put on to um, Mirth Control. You probably know who they yeah. are, didn't you? And so I would do like because I was working full time at the time and I had kids and stuff. I I was sort of driving to Birmingham, but I'd be driving the professional acts. I'd be doing like the middle five minutes or 10 minutes and then driving back. Right. So I did a lot of that for about a couple of years or a year or two. Right. I did a lot of those, yeah. I mean, I wasn't gigging, that I was gigging once every couple of weeks, really. So I wasn't doing like the four a week that you should do. Um, right. It is, yeah. it is a bit much for a week. That's that's full on. <laughs> it's hard when you've got kids and a full time yeah, job. Course. And yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Um, to date, what's been your best and worst gig? I can't really imagine you having a bad gig because you're such a good comedian. I've never had a bad one actually. Wow. Not really. No, I have. Um, <laughs> I, I, th I think at the time actually, at the time, because now I've had gigs that. You know, you know, maybe once a year or something, you have one that's bad. But now you've got more experience, you can handle it better. But yes, yes. back when I couldn't, and it really threw me, was like my about my number thirteen, I think it was. Um, I was doing a gig for Murph Control in Fleet, and every gig up until then had gone great. And I thought, how can people die? I kept hearing about people dying, and I was like, <laughs> how can people die? Just say something funny. <laughs> And, I, and the, the first act was on and he was um, not having a good gig at all. And I was just like, I was looking forward to just getting on. And I did this thing where I've never done it since or before that. I think I saw Andrew Maxwell once walking towards the stage, like getting the crowd going, yeah. like going, come on, like getting the crowd going. And it's so, <laughs> it's so was not me. And as I'm walking to the stage between like round tables, I'm, I'm like clapping myself, kind of. And I got up on stage and oh, I mate. fucking bombed, man. And it was so, <laughs> it was so brutal. I did about four minutes probably and just left. Wow. And I had to sit near the, I had to sit and wait for the other acts to finish because I had to drive them home. And I had to sit near the toilet entrance and oh. everyone would walk past and like, it was just so brutal. Yeah, I had the day yeah. off work the next day. Oh mate! Um, one of my best gigs yeah. was the following day for Math Browning. Uh, actually, I forget where it was. It was in Kingston somewhere, not outside the box. But that was the best gig to date. So my worst gig, and then my best one. So it was um, that's, interesting. That's, that's interesting that uh, you know they counterbalance each other out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you're on stage, what do you like to talk about? Do you have any themes or do you have any um, uh, routines that you keep doing? Or how do you, um, what do you like to talk about on stage? There's not a particular subject I like to talk about, I yeah. guess. Um, um, essentially jokes I do, like sure. and I try and tie them together so it's a bit of a narrative. But they're all based in truth, a lot of them, a lot, some of them aren't, but like... There's no one subject I like to talk about. Just say it's dang funny, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's about that's, it, man. That's what it's all about, my friend. Be funny. Yeah. Um, let's move on to Edinburgh. Have you, have you, you've, you, uh, uh, what was your first Edinburgh fringe like? Well, the first ever time I went to Edinburgh was to do So You Think You're Funny, a competition. That was like one gig in Edinburgh. And right. I got an aeroplane home with, like, with my towel between my legs and just reassessed what I'm doing. Oh, mate. And um, it was quite brutal, the gig. And um, and I wrote a whole new set after that, so it did me good. But the first like run I did, I did like six days in 2008. 
Um, but my first whole month was 2010. I did the Big Value, right? Which is um, Daryl Martin, just the tonic. Yeah, yeah. It's a great like showcase for like new acts. You yeah. do a gig every single night, yeah. and it's really you come back ready to kind of go pro. Um, and that's what I did. Yeah. yeah. I I first went to the Edinburgh Fringe in 2005, and I've been very lucky to be going every year since, just as a just a member of the audience, and and that's my holiday every year. I go up for a week and I see about 50 shows. Oh and, wow! Uh, yeah, I just it's just the best uh, experience when you when you step off the train at Waverley, the atmosphere just hits you. And, and yeah, it, I bet. And it's and it, and it, and it's just the most incredible experience to see. I mean, I bet as a comedy fan, it's just pure excitement. Oh. As an act going there, you get off. It smells kind of popcorny, doesn't it? Don't you yeah. think when you get off the train? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what that is. It smells like sweet. The same sweet in the air. <laughs> It's, it's, and, um, it is the it's most just, incredible thing. There's a lot of anxiety going there, like just getting off the train the first show. Yeah. You just yeah. want to get that one out of the way. But yeah. yeah, that must be great as kind of an audience member doing that. You know what I mean? All my all my friends uh, come up from London. I, I go to Carlisle for the summer. Carlisle's my home city for the oh, okay. summer. And um, uh, uh, I'm only an hour away from Edinburgh and everybody else comes up from London and i've meticulously planned a, sp a spreadsheet for all the acts that i want that we all want to see and and even oh, that man. is is just the best feeling because you know you're going to get really great days you know and like, you all go as a group do you yeah 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 so, well you do or, like three or, three a day up, or something like that come up at different times so i see a lot of people you know so uh, it works it works out really well yeah i i, I just and you do a lot it. of the free fringe do you then yeah 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 very much so i i i i do um new acts established acts i like to see plays about comedians I go to music. I go to other plays. So it's a real mixture of um, uh, uh, um, creativity and comedy is obviously at the top of that. So uh, it's just it's just the most wonderful thing. I um, bet. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, it is. Um, what do you think makes a good comedian? I would I would I would rate you as an extremely good comedian. Do you yeah. think that question is worthy of any? I'm only joking when I say yeah. By the way. <laughs> 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 yeah <laughs> what do you what do you think makes a good comedian um oh god um there's so uh, many different there's so many different types of great comedians isn't there like yeah. you know uh, eddie murphy yeah prior obviously yeah um you know louis ck i know it's a bit <laughs> controversial to say that but as a comic on stage um and um you know, it's hard to say one thing really. Bravery, maybe. Yeah, yeah. A presence, a presence on stage, being in the moment, I think is something that they all have. Yeah. Yeah. What I what we I all love, have. What I what I love about your act is your your delivery of a of a joke. The 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 delivery is pitch perfect that makes the audience keep wanting to listen, and you build it up. And it, it, it works every time I've seen you. It's so, so good. And I think each oh, comedian has a different technique that um, enables them to go out there and actually do it, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Um, how do you cope with any nerves before you go on stage? Do you still get nervous now? Yeah, um, I think I'll probably get just as nervous, but you just get used to it and you, you learn to manage it. Like someone said to me early on, like, you know, you get butterflies, but if you can get them to fly in formation, you know, you can be in control of it. Um, That's fantastic. Um, that kind of stuck in my head a bit, but I do, I do kind of little ritually. Th I used to have like two or three bananas every gig. Right. But when you're in it, it's just too many bananas. And also you get attached to things. So if you haven't got your banana, oh no, I'm going to have a bad gig. So <laughs> I, I try not to have anything to depend on, like psychologically. Um, so I just kind of, I just kind of breathe and just get in the moment. My, yeah, my, my yeah. main kind of thing after lockdown last year was just forgetting my stuff. Yeah. That was the, that was the main nerves. Yeah. Um, yeah. It kind of loosened me up a bit, like getting back on stage. I felt a lot looser and a lot, 
I was having a bit more fun with it, you yeah. know, because a lockdown gave you that breathing space. It was quite good. It was just forget forgetting bits. That was my main fear, <laughs> really. Other than other than my blog, the most creative thing I ever did was uh, write and appear in a play which we put on for comic relief. I wrote it for the Edinburgh Fringe. It's called The Applicant. And uh, it was about a it was about a bloke who's from Carlisle. It was based on me. And he came down to London. He had a very successful girlfriend uh, who 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 had a who had a very good job. Is that and, based on you as well, that part? Uh, yeah. Well, she 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 was very successful and I couldn't get a job. So um, I, I go for a number of different interviews for jobs, each one getting better. And the play was set up where um, uh, I would talk, I would run out. It would, I would be in the waiting room for, for, the, for the interview and I'd look at the audience and they're the only people who I, I can talk to. So I had a big monologue. Uh, and then I would do a, uh, and then we'd do the interview. So each scene was mo me monologue building the story up. And when I ran out on the first night, I forgot my monologue and I wrote the bloody thing. Oh no! <laughs> it only happened the one night, but I've never been so terrified in my life. I was like a rabbit in headlights. And, oh, it's and, brutal. Uh, yeah, and and um, I mean, I, I mean, mean, at least as a comic, you can kind of wing it. You can go to the audience, or you can yeah. kind of, to an extent, anyway. But yeah. you know, if you're doing a monologue like that, what what else are you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> there's well, no my, other. Well, my, there's no plan my, B. My uh, my my best joke uh, that I believe in in the play was uh, he was called Norman Oliver Hope, so it was no hope. So it was dear no hope. And you see, and and uh, um, I completely forgot that. So, so everybody was just looking at me blankly. What's Where, going on here? And how did you how did you get through it? When the other person came on, because there was two of us in the play, and my friend did all the accents for all the different interviewers. As soon as he appeared, we could bounce off each other and and br bring it back. But I that that opening five minutes was was oh. daunting. Oh, so, that bit of, that drip of sweat yeah, down your yeah, spine, yeah, that yeah. dry mouth, that yeah. out of body experience. We'd we'd rehearsed for ten weeks. Never happened to me, but oh mate, it 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 was an absolute nightmare. So so for en anyone who goes through that i really pity them because uh, yeah, it, yeah. it is it is just daunting because when you're on stage like you're making the whole room uncomfortable yeah yeah, yeah so that yeah. it turns from like goodwill into what the fuck is this guy you're making them feel <laughs> you're trying to make them laugh but you're making them feel really like uncomfortable yeah 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 yeah, yeah. it's you is, end up being really yeah. resented and you have to go out and you have to be confident and you have to believe that uh this is going to be entertaining and if you if you lose it you you, you they can smell it on. yeah um describe your writing process for your routines and where do you get your ideas from i wish i had a place i got ideas from because i just keep going there and get more but <laughs> i just um i don't know really in conversations in Sometimes I sit and think or read. I don't, there's no one place really. No. Um, yeah, just having a laugh with mates, I guess. The real and I just think, like, just just keep writing everything down, really. Yeah, yeah. The, re the reason I bring it up is that um, one of my favourite comedians is Ken Dodd. Oh, um, yeah. And I saw him loads of times, and it was extraordinary as he went from place to place how he could manufacture each place he was at to deliver the jokes, different jokes to different towns. Yeah, yeah. Do you do that with your routines? Do you mix them up a bit or? Um, not, not for different places I'm at, I guess. No. Um, I sometimes would open with a bit about the area. Yeah. That, that's it. Yeah, I sometimes do that. Um, but yeah, not really. I wouldn't do a new set for a new area. No. I just kind of, I just try and add a new bit each gig, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
How do you remember all your jokes and routines? I don't. <laughs> it's right. <laughs> you just. Um, I, I, I think. I mean, when I first started, like where I was so nervous about being on stage. The worst nightmare for me was like forgetting stuff. So I really, I would rehearse. I'd go through it and through it and right. through it. I don't do that now. Like I just kind of get an idea for a joke. Sometimes it just, it just comes fully formed. But a lot of the time I kind of just write it on stage a lot more now. Right. And, so you, um, so you, so, have, so you have notes written down to you for certainly for new material. If I'm doing a new material night, I will, yeah, yeah. But you can't really do that at, um, like, a professional night. Like, have notes on stage. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think a lot of memory comes with confidence. I think the fear, as soon as you get the fear of forgetting, you will. Yeah, I yeah. think a lot of it is that. It's a bit psychosomatic. Do you have um, pointers in your head that are guiding you through the routine? Um, I think when you've done it a good few times um you know four or five nights a week yeah it's a lot better and then when you put a new bit in you know where the new bit's going in um yeah, yeah. so yeah i mean i i can forget especially after lockdown because i haven't I, I don't rehearse or anything like that no i just kind of um get the jokes and put them down and on zoom gigs it's easy because you can have it written on the screen like yeah, bullet yeah. points <laughs> it's having yes. an auto cue it's like really good <laughs> I mean, that's the one great thing about Zoom gigs, yeah, um, yeah. apart from your being at home, which is nice. Yeah. Um, you know, that's the benefit to that, having an auto queue. <laughs> yeah. So you don't, it don't matter. No, no. <laughs> but yeah, when you get out live, um, yeah. I've got quite a few gigs coming up live and um, I've written my set down, all my new stuff and put it on the wall and I'm good. I just haven't been through it yet. Right. And I don't want it to be to the... Just before I'm going on stage, I'm going to be like, oh, why? I had fucking months to learn this. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's always the way. <laughs> oh, man, I'm the worst. You're a, you're, a, you're a busy man with with family, you know, so, you know, they've... they've, they've I mean, that's no excuse, to be honest. So I have I've hours and hours in the day. I mean, I, <laughs> I could do it. Um, I will do it. It's written on the wall. That's the first yeah. step, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, of course, of course. You, it's there. It just needs to be learned. Yeah. Um, to date, what has been your comedy highlight? Um, I th I think maybe doing Wembley Arena still, probably. <laughs> Is that um, true? <laughs> yeah. I, 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 wow. That was about it was about two or three years ago. Um, that's wow. that was so much adrenaline and that is amazing. Just such an amazing experience just looking out at that kind of crowd it was great yeah doing about 25 minutes no compare it's just so terrifying was that a was that were you like a support act for a for another comedian or were you yeah i was opening own? for um paul chowdhury oh wow um to a sold out wembley i, I i'd have to say that probably <laughs> So, um, with... Although winning the gong show when I was new at the comedy store seemed just as big at the time, to be honest. Wow. And stuff like that. But Wembley Arena, it'd probably have to be. So with, that one the, gig. with the bigger audiences at Wembley, was that more nerve-wracking than normal? Oh, yeah. In a way, I mean, I did the Hammersmith Apollo about four times before that, yeah. that week. So I was kind of built... It was built up to it a bit. But the good thing about Wembley is that it had a big screen behind you, so they can see your face more than they could in like a three thousand seater. Right. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. there was, it did have that. Um, but yeah, it was. I it was. I was nervous the whole day. Yeah. Just yeah. looking out, and then when they play the music, like the bass line just thumping through the dressing rooms. <laughs> I bet you didn't like, know I hit you. <laughs> it was just like wow. But this by the time incredible. you're walking to the stage, by the by the time like you're being walked to the stage or whatever, you're kind of ready. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, so it yeah, was it was yeah. an adrenaline. It was definitely a, a fucking rush. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me more about winning the Gong Show at the Comedy Store. 
Um, well, I went there when I was very new to get on, and I, it just looked so brutal. I didn't bother. <laughs> I, I wasn't booked in to do it, but I was going to just jump up from the audience, yeah. and it was so brutal. Um, I think Chris Martin actually and Carl Donnelly yeah. were on. I didn't know them both then, but then I think Chris or one of them won it, one who came second, and it just looked so brutal I didn't do it. But I went back the following year, just really ready. I was ready for it, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I had the set. I, ha I even had, like, it was all exactly, I knew exactly what I was going to say. I knew, because you have to come back on and do another minute. I had that written. Oh, I knew exactly. Wow. Then you have to come on and do a joke off with someone. Oh, and I had, oh. I was ready for every stage. Oh, and, um, yeah, it went my way. But um, it was such a rush winning that. Yeah. I've, I've no doubt. I, I, um, I, when I first went to the Edinburgh Fringe in 2005, I, I wanted to get it out of my system that uh, I wanted to have a go at stand-up comedy myself. And I went to a gong night, uh, which was... Um, in the Haymarket, well, actually, it was during the day, and it was it was in the Haymarket. It was run by the guy who ran ran the Free Fringe, who I knew at the time. And uh, I said, "Can I go on stage and do this?" And he said, "Well, there'll be three old people in the audience because it was an old folks. It, it couldn't be any worse." <laughs> so I walked out, and um, uh, um, the first line I had was, "Ladies and gentlemen." People think I look like Eddie the Eagle Edwards, but I can't see the resemblance myself. And of course, I'm his absolute double, or I was at the time. <laughs> and, so, and some old fella in the back just went, fuck off, and gonged me off after 30 seconds. And I walked off to my own foot, footsteps, and, the, oh. the, and the, um, the promoter said, have another go, there's another one later on. So I had another go, and exactly the same thing happened. And I, <laughs> and I thought... I never say never again, but uh, my place is in the audience supporting all the comics, but at least I've had a go. It, it is terrifying to go out and actually do it, like you say, but to do the gong show, you're up against it because there's so many others vying for it. So congratulations on winning. Because the audience are so like riled up. Yeah. Like it's like a, yeah, it was fucking carnage. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, oh shit. And then when and then when you get to five minutes, the music goes da, 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 and like and I was just like, yes. Um but then you've got to go back on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was yeah, it was a yeah. great rush. I did, all I won was like a um a hat. And well, I got sponsored I got spots of the store <laughs> after, but I won this hat thing. Yeah. But I was so proud of it. Brilliant. I just was going home on the tube. I was so happy congratulations that's fantastic um have you played the comedy store uh, uh, other than just the gong show have you played it a few times yeah i've done it a few times yeah, yeah. it's a it's a good gig yeah it it's is, a nice it's it a is, nice room it is an amazing place i i first went in um 1988 i've been in london 30 years uh, that was the heyday of it i bet wasn't yeah, it and and on the bill was um uh, uh, Richard Morton, Linda oh, Smith, yeah. God lover, she was on. Um, Who? Who Linda, did you say? Linda Smith. Oh, okay, yeah. Linda Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh. Um. Uh. Who else? Steve Gribbin played. Ah, oh, Steve. Um, yeah, I like Steve. Uh, Hattie Hayridge was on the oh, bill. Oh yeah. And top of the bill was an American comedian called Charles Fleischer. And he was never heard of again because he went to Hollywood to voice Roger Rabbit. And that's where he made all his money. <laughs> it was I extraordinary. Can't. It was a zany um, voice uh, comic. And he, and Did he, he sound a, like Roger Rabbit? His like stage voice? You could was tell it? that it, yeah, yeah. As soon as you saw the film, I thought I've that seen it. That film was and massive at the time, wasn't yeah. it? Bob Hoskins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was such a good film. It was oh, like groundbreaking. Yeah, yeah. Mixing yeah, so, cartoon with real film, whoa! It was exactly, it was exactly right. It, it I was, saw it in a cinema. Yeah, it was, it was the chap yes, who made uh, Back to the Future, the director. Yeah. It, it, oh really? Yeah. Same, 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 same uh, director. Um, do you have any ambitions as a comedian? Would you like to be on television? Would you like to host a chat show? 
would you like? Um, I really that? love doing our podcast. We do a podcast, TVI. Right. Me and Carl Donnelly. Yeah, I just like to do keep doing that, more of that, more yeah. stand up. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's. I don't know. I just. I just enjoy. It. I just enjoy doing it. Carl's Not been. Carl's been doing doing one of these for me, and uh, he said exactly the same. He said the podcast is is going really well. So, uh, congratulations on that as well, and uh, and and long may it last. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, we just enjoy doing it. Um, he's in Australia at the moment. That's right, yeah. Um, but we do it on Zoom, so it hasn't really affected it. No, no. I mean, and, and I mean, he's busy at the moment doing gigs, so it might delay a, an episode a couple of days or whatever. But, um, right. yeah, it's, it's great. Have you... Did you enter any more competitions other than the Gong Show to promote your comedy have you done that over the years or not um i won the laughing horse competition as well and um i came second in the hackney um one um what else did i do good lad um there was a a com the comedy calf did a yearly thing and i won that right um so yeah so i did a few i went i went through the competitions when i yeah. was like going for a couple of years it's so a good you, idea, really. It gets your kind of name out there. Promoters yeah, get to yeah. know you. It's good for the CV at the time, really. And and it really gets you cracking with more. Once you once the promoters are, are there, you you can gain more gigs and more experience, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, definitely. It helped me to go professional. Uh, yeah. A lot of the competitions. Yeah, I right. think. Yeah. Definitely. Um, how have you found online gigs as opposed to live gigs? Do you do many online gigs? I do, yeah. Um, I do. I do some corporates, and also there's a few clubs that um, are, are doing online stuff. Yeah. At first, I I was like, "What the fuck are we doing?" <laughs> you know, it was like suddenly, suddenly we, you know, we. We want to be stand-up comedians. We do it for a long time. We get there. We're doing it. We're making a living. And yeah. suddenly, we've got to be YouTubers. It was yeah. like, um, but doing more and more of them, I kind of just got used to it. And there's no real special way to play it. You just play it like you would anyway. And that's the one thing I've learned. Yeah. Just do what you do. Um, it's just to a camera, not to an audience. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I like them actually. Do you, prefer, find them do you prefer them to live stand-up? I'd like a bit of, I mean, I love live stand-up, yeah. um, you know, even the social aspect of it with the other acts and an audience and, yeah. but I, I'd like kind of a hybrid, I'd like to be doing both. I think that's what might happen when the comedy clubs open, they may well stream one show a week or something, or, or if, a, if an act's on two or three times in a week maybe one of them will be streamed for people who can't get to the gigs and things like that because i have... think it's the way forward yeah. definitely because yeah. people from all over the world can see it can't exactly. they exactly yeah yeah i mean and um especially for like edinburgh previews even doing edinburgh you know you haven't yeah. got to go up there and yeah um yeah. yeah so it's a great idea i think i think a lot of stuff will come from it it's like a lot of business is a doing it now like a lot of people will be working from home a lot more than they would before sure yeah lockdown. yeah um i'm i'm with you i think that uh, online gigs are a super substitution to the real thing um, yeah uh, uh certainly uh, uh, certainly during lockdown for me um online comedy has saved me i don't know what i would have done without um going to the zoom gigs um, yeah I, I go regularly to Always Be Comedy online. I go regularly to uh, Happy Mondays, which is Sean James's gig. I go to um, Jarleth Regan's um, Return of the Crack gig on a Friday. They're, so they are there every day if you want them. I go and see Boothby Grafo every Thursday. Um, but when they first started, there was no audio. So of course, me with my big laugh, I was just laughing at four walls, and I thought I was. It was be wasted. Away. Your laugh was <laughs> wasted on your on your own ears. <laughs> so, so when they opened up the audio for the front row, which was a great idea, um, the comedians it it was great for them because they could time the laughs, um, you, you know, with everything online. But um, 
but having said that for me you can't be live i really miss going for a few definitely i mean that's the job isn't it that's why we do it um to be on stage in front of a live audience there's a lot you know there's a lot more you can do yeah. in a live situation but you know the zoom gigs i'd like to do both to be honest yeah yeah 20 percent zoom gigs or something yeah 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 brilliant when yeah. i first started doing zoom gigs i was so like i didn't know what the fuck was going on <laughs> so i would um i would mute the audience actually i wow. would push mute on my laptop and i'd cover the screen yeah so it was literally i didn't want to be thrown you know by just like two people huh uh, you know what I mean? It would put me off. So I just did a, like a monologue to the camera and yeah. then I, I kind of might watch it back afterwards or see the feedback on a text from the promoter. And it was go- it was working really well, actually. And I thought, this is easy. You're like bulletproof. Like you don't know, you know, because half the... Half the thing about dying is you're getting dry mouth, you're thinking, and you speed yeah. up or yeah. you, you react negatively or, you know, you start kind of rushing to your best joke. But with that, you can, I was just more poised. And I'm just doing my set, you know, Brilliant. confident. And, um, but I stopped me. I did that for about 10 gigs probably. <laughs> and then I, I don't do it now. I yeah. just, yeah, it, it's a lot more comfortable now talking to a computer. Yeah. 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 Good on you. Um, who are your favourite comedians, past and present? Um, <coughs> I'd say, like, I mean, I know it's most people, a lot of people's favourite, but like Richard Pryor, yeah, Eddie Murphy, yeah, Bill Burr, yeah, um, Dave Chappelle, Louis C.K., um. Chelsea Peretti, I like. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Good call. Um, yeah, Nate Bogartzi's good. Um, yeah. I've been watching some of his on him on Netflix. Sebastian Maniscalco, I really like. He's so opposite to the kind of what I w- do or want to do, but yeah. he's such he's so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. such a good performer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's half of it, isn't it? You know, you've got to be endearing on stage. And you've yeah, got to be, and he's so and he's, he's very so good f- at that. Yeah, I really like physical comics like him or yeah. Brian Brian Regan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. Did you have um, comedy growing? Did you have comedy around you growing up? My my dad was um, a very funny guy. I mean, he was a comic in the 70s and stuff. Um, right. I didn't really n- know much about what he did as a comic, but um, yeah, we, all, we always kind of, it was always funny, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It was always bleak or funny, you know <laughs> what I mean? Um, but I, my sister kind of got into Bill. I, I watched Eddie Murphy when I was about 10. My mate had Delirious on, right. my mate's older brother. Yes. And we were just quoting it, not even knowing what it means for like weeks afterwards. Brilliant. And then Bill Hicks came out like, yeah. might have been like in 90 or something. Wasn't right. it? 90. Yeah. And he was on Channel 4. He had that um, one night stand, yeah, he yeah. was called. Yeah, yeah. And I was just mesmerised yeah. by him. And I saw, that, and that I saw set. him live in Manchester. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I, I saw him at the Royal Exchange in Manchester. He came on at midnight and he did uh, two hours and it was the most extraordinary performance. I was so pleased I got to see him because... He was so good. What, and lo- what, what could he have done if he was still here now? You know, he, I know. He, he, was, he, he was amazing. I um, the reason why I asked the question is that the first ever comedian I saw was Les Dawson way back in 1975. He was quality, though, wasn't he? I loved him. Uh, uh, Other than didn't he do blankety blank for a while? Blankety blank, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he he was great. And then a year later, I saw Tommy Cooper. Oh yeah. And then into the eighties, I saw uh, Ben Elton, Rick Mail, uh, Frank Skinner, French and Saunders. Frank um, Skinner was a big influence, yeah. actually. I bought his book before I did comedy, and it was such a good book. Yeah, I think a lot of comics read that. Yeah, is that like, he's done two or three of them? I've I've read On the Road, and I've read Frank. Um, uh, I forget what the first one was called. The first but one of those things called Frank, but certainly is is one on the road. Is is a real a good documentary, uh, um, 
it really documents his life touring on the road and it's 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 fantastic he's he's such a great comedian because he makes it look effortless and, i know he, yeah. he, he he is very good yeah, yeah. Um, I, I gigged with him about a year in actually I couldn't believe it I wow. was like what? he was on McIntyre was on wow. it's only like a, a little gig in Kings the outside the box actually all right and he opened I was on in the middle and uh, wow. McIntyre was closing it was crazy wow I bet that was some gig yeah it was amazing I first I first saw Michael McIntyre in a hut at the fringe and he, oh, played, yeah. and he played to about 30 people and and you knew he was going to be big and 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 he's he's, he's he's a very big success now um like me do you go to a lot of comedy gigs as a member of the audience either before you did comedy or whilst you're out doing comedy not not particularly to no. be honest I, I went to a few like the year i started before that year i went to so I went to Jonglers a couple of times. I went to the comedy store a couple of times. Um, I wouldn't say I was an avid comedy goer at all, though, but right. I was really into it. And I used to watch um, the Jonglers show used to be on Comedy Central really late at night. Yeah. And I'd get home steaming drunk, like watching it with one eye open. <laughs> I was so fucking pissed. We've all been there, mate. <laughs> yeah, and, and like, and just watching like Flannery. Like a lot of acts that I've worked with since, it's, 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 it was surreal actually. Yeah. Being on that stage like a couple of years later, the one that I watched so right. much of. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. And there used to be a show called The World Stands Up. I used to watch quite a lot yes. as well. Yeah, um, yeah, do you yeah. remember that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I... it, had the com it had Jonglers, The World Stand Up, Stands Up, and The Comedy Store Show. They were the three things on telly, on like Sky, some obscure Sky channels, I think. That's right, yeah. But yeah. I watched a lot of that. Um, I didn't really. I saw a couple of people's hour shows at um, Soho Theatre. I saw Andrew Maxwell, yeah, and Hal Cruttenden. Oh, he's brilliant. He's been on this, and he's he's been absolutely. Yeah, hilarious. he's a good guy. Yeah, yeah. He's, and um, I saw guy? his solo show, yeah. and um, before I started in in Soho, yeah, right. And Andrew Maxwell. Um, the um, the reason why I asked that question is um, if you're on a bill of comedians do you stay and watch them or or do you some do you sometimes have a number of gigs that you have to go off to would you would you stay and watch the bill um i tend to not because no. often is another gig yeah or um you know sometimes i'll take if, if it's in london sometimes I take advantage of getting an home earlier. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So yeah. I do that. But I yeah. you know, I I I, I sometimes do. Yeah. I sometimes yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. Um I've much enjoyed talking to you. This has been an absolute delight. Um just before we go, is there anything else you'd like to say? Have you got any online gigs or any gigs coming up that you want to mention? Do you want to mention um, any of the podcasts? Are you writing at all? Anything like that? Where can people find you on social media? Um, find me on Instagram, Julian Dean Official. Dean's got an E on the end, D-E-A-N-E. -E, and right. same on TikTok. And um julian underscore dean on twitter and facebook julian dean comedian um and the podcast is tvi and the social media handles is we are tvi yeah um yeah and that's um that's about it isn't it are you are you are you uh do you want to mention any gigs that are coming up um i haven't got the exact i'll put them online i haven't got the dates in my head right. but yeah i've got a okay. lot of gigs coming up after good man late may they start yeah good lad well i will be there to see you live because i can't wait to see you live again you're a very very funny man and it's been oh, an thanks. absolute delight to have you on on my thanks for having me mate it's been really nice podcast. thank you all the best to you and you take care thank you take care. cheers man